Thank you for watching. It's our first episode of the new year and we are recapping the best of 2017 right here at the Scarborough Library facility. The library opened its doors to the public in February 2015. It pays homage to stalwarts in education and library and information services in Tobago. Stay with us as we explore the state-of-the-art facility. I'm Davia Chambers and the Let's Talk Tobago Year in Review starts now. A memorandum of understanding is signed for workers at the Studley Park Quarry. The Tobago House of Assembly is phasing out the use of polystyrene and later Tobago gets high-tech with its first information and communications technology summit. These stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago returns. Stay with us. It's the land of tomorrow. Princess Margaret say, come to Vigo for holiday. Now the whole world say, come to Vigo for holiday. The Scarborough Library facility on Gardenside Street has the latest technology to meet the research and learning needs of all residents. It replaced the old Scarborough Library, which was badly damaged by an earthquake in 1997. The new Scarborough Library is much, much more than books. From Scarborough to Studley Park, as the new special purpose company, Studley Park Enterprise Limited, is seeking to transform the island's quarry into a profitable business. The first step was for the Tobago House of Assembly to resolve all staffing issues. Here are the details. Workers at the Study Park quarry have been assured they won't lose their jobs. The quarry will now be managed by a special purpose company called Studley Park Enterprise Limited. Some workers will be hired under the new company. This guarantee is one of the major conditions coming out of the Memorandum of Understanding signed by the National Union of Government and Federated Workers, NUGFW, on behalf of the workers and the THA. We would have agreed that a number of positions um, would be made available to the union so that their workers can take up those positions in the new company. We agreed on a number and um, we will ensure that that arrangement um, is executed. Um, workers will go, those who choose to go to the new company <laughs> shall go, do so under terms and conditions that are no less favorable than what they now enjoy. The special purpose company will be managed by a board of directors. And for those workers who aren't able to fill certain positions within the new company, they will be reassigned to one of the THA's divisions. We wanted to ensure that nobody was retrenched or terminated and so forth. Those who are unable to meet the, the, uh, the requirements of what they need at the level of the board would be redeployed in the, in the DIQUE, the Division of Infrastructure, Quarries and Environment. And those who have remained, they would be better salaried. And now they will not be considered as deliberated workers. They will be paid on a monthly basis. The union was also able to negotiate an additional incentive for employees who will be transferred to the division. We believe that it is a good agreement on behalf of the workers and the peoples of Tobago. Because when you are negotiating, you only think about the workers. You have to think in terms of your employers. Because without the employers, there will be no work. And without the employees, there will be no work. So we amicably resolve. The quarry is considered to have some of the best aggregate in the region. The rock material comes from andesite a hard, dense volcanic rock. It's a valuable resource for the construction industry. With proper management, the Stully Park Quarry can become a significant source of revenue for the island. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. This amphitheater near the library's entrance is a place for expression and entertainment. It's open to the public with no cost attached and can be used for concerts and other special events. Now, the health sector got significant attention in 2017. The Scarborough General Hospital's Accident and Emergency Unit was renovated to ensure the comfort of patients awaiting medical attention. More in this report. If you or a loved one falls ill and has to visit the hospital, you'd want to be in a comfortable space while waiting to be attended to. 
That's the motive behind the newly renovated accident and emergency and outpatient clinic at the Scarborough General Hospital. Patients can now have a waiting room that's spacey with air conditioning for comfort and additional seating. This facility that we are about to commission or to unveil this morning is the culmination of months or even years of effort following the opening of this new hospital in December of 2012. Immediately upon opening, we recognized that there were certain deficiencies and we moved immediately to address those deficiencies, namely the outpatient clinic and the a and &E. The refurbishment is another phase in the evolution of the Scarborough General Hospital. It's part of the Tobago Regional Health Authority's goal to provide quality patient care. We will continue as we identify not just infrastructural deficiencies, but other areas of um, weaknesses or areas that require improvement. We'll continue to address those areas and improve the physical infrastructure and by extension the services that we provide to our patients. Customer service is also pivotal to setting high standards in public health care on the island. We will continue to deliver quality care to the patients. We will be motivated, continue to be motivated, and we will ensure that the TRH's mission and vision is accomplished through our works. The renovation works cost the TRH $2 million. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk to Bego. Globally, the library environment has changed. The Scarborough Library facility has many books and lots of historical information, but it's also a place where people of all ages come to learn things like computer literacy, literacy and Spanish, to enjoy storytelling and even to play games. The environment has also been a major theme in the past 12 months. A major achievement was the signing of a memorandum of agreement to construct a wastewater treatment plant in southwest Tobago. The details are in this next story. The southwest of the island is one step closer to getting its own wastewater treatment plant. Thanks to a signing of a tripartite memorandum of agreement among the Tobago House of Assembly, Mount Pleasant Credit Union and the Water and Sewage Authority, WASA. Decades ago, the credit union acquired the Bonacord Estate. They built a sewage plant to treat the waste water from the homes and businesses on the estate. WASA has now acquired the plant and are set to expand upon what's already there. Essentially, what we were having as a problem is the undischarged, uncontrolled discharge of wastewater into the environment. It was a public health hazard as well. Obviously, it was environmentally unsafe as well as it obviously would affect tourism tourism and, and ultimately the economy of Tobago. We'll, we'll, we'll expand the ponds, upgrade the ponds, do what's necessary because this is, this is just one of the two ponds. There's another pond that we acquired in Salmon Grove from Clico, um, which we are also going to use to, you know, as part of the, 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 the project. The Tobago House of Assembly acted as negotiating agent for the agreement. After one meeting with the Chief Secretary, the credit union agreed to hand over the plan to Wasa in exchange for lands at Corlan Estate. It's significant because it signals that we are close to the end of our sewer problem as far as Southwest Tobago is concerned. You know, there's the Scarborough Wastewater Treatment Plant, and in Southwest Tobago, we had a number of individual um, plants and individual uh, septic tanks at homes and so on. So the plan is to, is to have a, a organized sewer system for Southwest Tobago to take pressure off of the, um, of the marine environment, Bukuri, and the beaches and so on in Southwest Tobago, so that we'll have a pristine environment in keeping with our motto of clean, green, safe, and serene. According to WASA, the wastewater treatment plant should serve over 20,000 people in southwest Tobago. We have the land interest, right? And WASA, of course, is the statutory authority that is interested. And Tobago House of Assembly, of course, is, is concerned about the welfare of the people of Tobago. If you have a situation like that, then it's good for us to collaborate. It's the collaboration that is critical here collaboration that leaves us all as winners. Construction of the wastewater treatment plant should begin this month. I am Marlon Gutzelben for Let's Talk Tobago. We have to take a break, but when we return, Tobago phases out the use of polystyrene products. Stay with us.
Jupiter. Yeah. The Scarborough Library caters to everyone, including the elderly and the differently abled. In fact, a room for the visually impaired provides access to a braille machine, recording and talking books, and a job access with speech software. This allows connectivity to the web, email, and social media. So polystyrene products are harmful to our health and the environment. That's why Tobago is making a move to eliminate its use and to replace it with products that are environmentally friendly. Omidara Mills explains. You may know it by its brand name, Styrofoam. It's used for disposable packaging of food and that morning coffee, or even items such as furniture and televisions. More accurately though, it's known as expandable polystyrene. It's lightweight, relatively inexpensive, and for a long time has been the preferred packaging material for restaurants and fast food outlets. But polystyrene is also harmful to our health as well as the environment. That's why the Tobago House of Assembly passed a motion to phase out the use of polystyrene foam products on the island at its second plenary sitting and the executive is moving quickly to establish a committee to oversee the process. The formation of a, a multi-stakeholder team, which will include, of course, members from the Tobago House of Assembly, the Department of Environment, Fisheries, Health, um, our environmental stakeholders, our business stakeholders, our youth representative, and so on. So we expect that a multi-stakeholder team will do a couple of things. And in the first instance, they would have to provide an action plan for us. Um, for the way forward with phasing out polystyrene products. And of course, we expect this um, report within a month. Polystyrene is non biodegradable. It takes hundreds of years for the material to decompose and can harm marine life when swallowed. In some U.S. cities, such as New York and San Francisco, the use of this material has been banned. Is the same in many other countries, such as France and Guyana. But what are the more eco-friendly alternatives if Tobago is to phase out the use of polystyrene? The hot cups that we have, which all of these products, by the way, are totally compostable, made of baggers, um, totally compostable, so we don't even have to throw them into the, um, to the landfill, send them to the landfill. They can be composted. Though this looks like plastic, it's made entirely from baggers and it's 100% compostable, 100%. Um, the hot cups are actually cheaper than the normal styrofoam cups of this, um, of this size. The division is also working to create awareness about the alternatives. A packaging exposition entitled, If It's Green, It's Good, will soon be hosted to highlight more sustainable options available on the market. Educational and sampling campaigns will also take place around the island. And we want to start doing almost sample days. So we're going to partner with some of the suppliers, the food suppliers, to see if they can sample some of the products. The multi-stakeholder committee will also look at the best way to handle other waste materials and sustainable alternatives for those products. It's part of the efforts to ensure Tobago remains clean, green, safe and serene. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. This library has three floors with sections named in honor of Tobagonians who contributed to the development of the island and in particular education. They include James Bigart, Susan Craig James, Dr. Eastland McKenzie and Anne Mitchell Gift who was instrumental in refining Tobago's library services to meet the demands of this information and the technology age. Now we all rely on electricity to do many things in our daily lives and last year the expansion of the island's power plant at Cove began. This will ensure a more reliable supply. Caroline Wallace has the details. The Cove power plant owned by the Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Commission, TNTAC, will be expanded from 64 megawatts to 84 megawatts. This simply means Tobago's power generation capacity will be increased. 
The additional 25% of total power generation will give the facility the capability to power 70,000 homes. This means that more industrial plants and tourist facilities will be able to be stored in the near future. At Antiantec, will have the capacity to meet the low demand growth. Although the existing power generation capacity of Tobago meets its current demand of 56 megawatts, a number of factors prompted this expansion. Among them is the need to diversify the island's generation fleet, as well as the existence of two age generators in Scarborough, which provide only 8 megawatts in standby mode. Efforts to minimize outages through preventative maintenance and upgrades to the grid remain an essential area of focus. However, in meeting our commitment to national development, it is necessary to develop and implement medium to long-term plans. The objective of this plant expansion is therefore intended to address deficiencies in the existing configuration and to improve the long-term reliability of the electricity supply in Tobago. The project will involve the installation of a new gas turbine and ancillary infrastructure. Its life expectancy is more than 20 years, and is similar to an aircraft engine, it can be upgraded and recycled. Chief Secretary Calvin Charles is pleased that added emphasis is being placed on making Tobago's electricity supply more efficient, reliable, and predictable. This expansion will ensure that the increase in demand for electricity will be matched by an available supply. This assurance is a prerequisite for business confidence, thereby facilitating the successful implementation and completion of a number of our development projects here in Tobago. The expansion will cost $132 million and is set to be completed by July 2018. I'm Caroline Wallace for Lesson Talk Tobago. A quick stroll to the first floor takes you to the Young Adult Library, the Audiovisual and Multimedia Room, the James Bigart Adult Library, and the Senior Citizens Lounge. Now, this lounge creates a space for the young at heart to play chess and even create works of arts and crafts. From the indoors to the outdoors, where emergency responders once stand by as tropical storm Brett hit, destroying a few homes, knocking down trees, and causing landslides in Tobago. Omadara Mills has this report. Damages by the passing of tropical storm Brett were spread across the island in places like Delaford, Rockley Vale, Patience Hill, and Signal Hill. Power lines, trees, retaining walls, some roofs, and other parts of people's homes were affected. The assistant director of the Tobago Emergency Management Agency, Earl Hernandez, says that the collaborative effort among all emergency responders was most effective in light of the disaster. Many of the reports that came through 211 or came directly to TEMA was funneled to those ESFs. For instance, if we had a power line, we would speak directly to TNTEC. If we had a water issue, we would speak directly to WASA. If we had a health issue, we had persons from the Tobago Regional Health Authority. They were there to ensure that all the health centers were open and operated. We did have a lot of shelters being open, approximately 13. The Chief Secretary, Kelvin Charles, along with the Secretary for the Division of Infrastructure, Quarries and the Environment, Kwesi Devines, visited some of the affected areas to see the damages firsthand. One such visit was in Providence, where a tree damaged part of a roof. We are now, the Secretary for Infrastructure and, and I, uh, doing our own field work to get a sense of um, what um, damage, if any, may have been caused, particularly in respect of landslips and so on. Clifton Anderson of Google Patch Providence was one of the homeowners affected by the storm. He is grateful for the assistance he got from the fire service in clearing the path to his home. I appreciate what they said. They will come and assist fixing the road, see about the roof that broken. And basically, that is about it. I'm very thankful. The fire service came, yes, this morning. They cut the tree, they removed it from the door that they could get to come out. And I'm very appreciate with whatever they did for me this morning. The Community Emergency Response Team, CERT, was also on hand to give assistance to affected residents. CERT Pro provided humanitarian service to 
many of the community members who responded with their roofs collapsed, persons who wanted power generators, people who wanted trees removed. So Cert Pro really did what they were supposed to do and designed to do to assist the public in a time of need. This is the start of the hurricane season. As such, citizens are being advised that each household or business should have an emergency checklist that is easily accessible and can be utilized in case of a natural disaster. I'm Omodara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Coming up next, the nation's new driver's permit system is launched in Tobago. Stay tuned for the details. We'll be right back. This space is fittingly known as the Eastland Mackenzie Children's Library. Dr. Mackenzie is not only a former independent senator, her contribution to the performing arts and to child development and education in Tobago is outstanding. She's also been recognized with a national award, the Shaconia Medal Silver. We step into the conference room as technology was the focus for the public and the private sectors as well as industry experts as they looked to accelerate Tobago's development which was discussed at the island's first ICT exposition and the summit. Here are the details. Innovation has been a driving force for economies around the world. Tobago is taking the same path towards economic sustainability. The island recently hosted its first Information and Communication Technology ICT Exposition and Summit. It connected industry experts, the private sector, and the Tobago House of Assembly for discussions aimed at transforming the island through technology. It is the first in the Caribbean and the first in the third world. While we, and this is the first time we're doing this in the third world, it is impossible to diversify an economy without technology. And it is for this reason that I am so proud today to welcome you here to participate in phase one of creating an intelligent island in Tobago. The expo and summit raised awareness about career opportunities in ICT, and it provided a platform to launch a number of new services through Tobago Information Technology Limited, TITL. The Assembly also invested in the construction of an innovation center. The Tobago House of Assembly invested over $6 million to have to construct an innovation center. And I believe we have put in all the necessary traditional infrastructure here on the island, but now we are looking towards the future. And the innovation center, my dear friends, is poised to give us the competitive edge and the competitive advantage. The telecommunications services of Trinidad and Tobago, TSTT, will construct an internationally certified data center on the island. This will ensure redundancy in power and data storage. TSTT recently signed an agreement with the EIDCOT for the construction of a Tier 3 TIA 942 certified data center right here in Tobago. TIA 942 certification is a guarantee to customers that the data center offers the highest levels of reliability. Over the course of its existence, it will have virtually uninterrupted operations. Well, 99.982% uptime if you want to be a little specific. The Information and Communication Technology Exposition and Summit ran from September 26th to 27th at the Magdalena Grand Beach and Golf Resort. I'm Kuhn De Freitas for Let's Talk to Beagle. At the Scarborough Library facility, reading is a key area. It starts with storytelling for the young children. There's the annual International Literacy Day reading competition for primary schoolers. The Young Adults Library even hosts a monthly book club to engage teens in reading novels, especially those by West Indian authors. 
Now, Tobago was also part of another first in 2017. The island launched the new National Driver's Permit. So what's so special about the new permit system? Let's find out in this report. Tanisha Jofield is the first person in Tobago and of the country to be issued the new National Driver's Permit. The new permits are part of a centralized digital system embedded with barcode technology. This makes it more difficult for anyone to duplicate these permits. They were rolled out in Tobago before anywhere else in the country. Here you have a new um, driver's license and before it is actually available at any of the licensing offices in Trinidad, people in Tobagoans, persons in Tobago, from this morning will be receiving that license when they come to renew their permits or when they are granted a permit. The system allows authorized licensing office staff to access data on drivers as required. Permit holders no longer need to go to a specific office to retrieve their information. Let us start to satisfy our customers. We need to change the mode that we operate in. I know we have a lot of challenges here in Tobago. Very soon that will come to an end. Very soon that will come to an end. You will be getting your new facilities here in Tobago. And with the technology that will be, in, will be installed from this morning, coming to the license office will not go, going to be a disaster. The new system also means there won't be any long waits for certified copies of vehicle registrations. From this morning, if you apply for your certified copy, you'll be able to collect it right here in real time. And that is just the beginning of what we, we have planned for this year. The new system doesn't cancel existing permits, so drivers won't have to change their old ones until they expire. I'm Carolyn Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's now time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear what you, the viewers, have to say. Today we're asking, how did you ring in the new year? Here's what you said. Just rest with my family, you know what I mean? And I come in, tell myself, you know what? I am going to push it even a little bit harder, you know what I mean, this year. Stay in bed with my husband. I didn't really do much, and I just make sure everything real, keep it real, make money, save some, invest time, and do good productive things for the new year. I went to church, of course. The pastor preached a really powerful sermon. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to hurt you. Me and my family had a get-together. Normal. One life. We ain't really watching what you My family and I, we went to church to bring in the new year. I went to church. And I had a grand time with my family. I just sit down home, relax, and I prayed. And I asked my Savior to give me a wonderful new year. We close yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago. And as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program. And be sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers, along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week. We close now with a montage of the Chief Secretary distributing hampers. We do hope you enjoy.